Hi, I'm Colin G. West, and this is Poker Science. Let's start this week with a question. What's the worst starting hand in Hold'em Poker? Now, some smart Alex will try to claim that there is no worst hand, because no matter how bad your hand is, you can always win by bluffing. But of course, the problem with bluffing is that sometimes your opponent doesn't believe you. And a hand that can't win when your bluff gets called is clearly worse than a hand that has even a smidgen of value. So, just for fun, let's try to rigorously determine the most useless, terrible, wouldn't even want to run this as a bluff hand in all of poker. Spoiler alert, it's not going to be pocket rockets. A leading candidate is the famous seven deuce off suit. After all, it will almost never make a straight or a flush, and among all other hands with that property, it's the one that makes the worst pairs as well. At first glance, it seems like a slam dunk for the worst possible hand. But not so fast. Wouldn't you be worse off with even lower cards? Say, three deuce off suit? At first glance, it might seem like this is obviously an even worse hand. Sure, it can make a straight a little bit easier. But Seven Deuce literally has Three Deuce dominated. In a heads-up match, Seven Deuce is more than twice as likely to win when facing Three Deuce. We can settle this mathematically. And the answer is, it depends. If you have Three Deuce offsuit against a single opponent with Seven Deuce offsuit, then it's true, your opponent is more than two times as likely to win the hand. But that calculation is specific to a heads-up scenario. It turns out that in that case, your opponent's seven becomes particularly valuable because of how often heads-up hands end with a single pair or a high card winning the day. On the other hand, in a large game context, you're much more likely to need something like a straight in order to take down the pot. And mathematical projections really show that three deuce off is a more valuable hand in that context. To be absolutely clear, both of these hands are totally valueless in both contexts, but it's still an interesting thought experiment, kind of like trying to decide which Kardashian is the least off-putting. Now you might be wondering, if 7-deuce is the worst hand in a full ring game, and 3-deuce is the worst hand heads up, where do things switch over? What happens in between? There's no definitive way to answer that, but numerical simulations suggest that 7-deuce is the worst hand in a game with 6 or more players, and 3-deuce is the worst hand with 5 or fewer. Of course, there's a third choice. Arguably, the worst hand in poker is not the one that's inherently the weakest, but the one that you make the most mistakes with. For some players, that might be something like ace-queen offsuit or jacks, which are all too easy to overvalue. For others, it might be face guards with really bad kickers, which are tempting to play if you haven't been getting any good cards, but which actually remain incredibly weak. Statistically speaking, there's actually very little difference in the expected win percentages between queen-deuce-off and seven-deuce-off at least in a full ring game. If you're a type of player that regularly opens a hand like this, then in some sense, this is the worst hand in poker for you, because it's the one that's costing you the most chips in the long term. So maybe there's no definitive answer to the question of which hand is worst. After all, it depends on what your definition of worst is, and even then, it depends on other factors, like the number of players in the game. But at least now you know the arguments on all sides. And the good news is, it really doesn't matter which of these is the worst of the worst. At the end of the day, you should just throw all that garbage away and save your chips for a better spot.